triage is a system of sorting casualties into three different categories. Those that will live with or without treatment, those that will die with or without treatment, or those with life-threatening problems that require immediate medical attention in order to survive. Critically ill patients or those with life-threatening illness or injury are always the first priority for medical personnel. The goal of triage is to quickly identify problems that could be life-threatening so the opportunity to save that patient's life isn't lost. Patients with potentially life-threatening problems fall into a rapid transport category, which means that only life-saving interventions should be performed in the field and other first aid interventions like wound care may need to be delayed until after the patient arrives at the hospital. I have seen a lot of situations where pet owners or pet care professionals delayed too long providing too much first aid in the field and by the time the patient arrived to the emergency room it was too late for us to be able to save the patient's life. The focus of a triage exam is vital functions, primarily airway breathing and circulation, followed by disability assessment and abdominal problems. Considering the mechanism of illness or injury is also very important and there are situations where a patient may appear stable in the field, but regardless, because of what happened to them or other concerns, they must be transported to an emergency facility for immediate evaluation and care. As a first aid attendant, you must be able to recognize problems at triage that are potentially life-threatening. All of these patients need to get to a medical facility as soon as possible. In critical patients, interventions in the field should focus on treatment priorities of the airway, so making sure that the airway is patent breathing for the patient if they're not taking breaths on their own, circulation, so initiating CPR if necessary, controlling ongoing bleeding, and assessing whether shock could be present, recognizing the possibility of spinal cord injury or neurologic impairment, and stabilizing the spine for transport, and evaluating for problems of the abdominal cavity, such as inability to urinate, and a painful or distended abdomen, and covering any penetrating open wounds to the chest or abdominal cavity. In the critical patient, you must initiate immediately life-saving interventions as quickly as possible, prepare the patient for transport, and get on the road to the nearest emergency hospital as efficiently as possible. The clock is ticking. Mm -hmm.